salutations respective viewers i'm george from ireland so here are my collected view views on um privilege and uh, justice so um well this is in particularly in relation to what's happened in, in the united states recently where a woman who was an actress on desperate housewives has been found guilty of fraud in relation to her daughter's admission to a top uh, university. Um, so this woman, she forged various refer references and there are other people in on the plot, other people who were arraigned and convicted and await sentence sentencing, including sports coaches, various people who made um, fraudulent statements. They knowingly made these bogus statements in order to help very well healed um, young people uh, gain admission to tertiary education institutions with a fantastic reputation. Um, and some of those who did so, some of the sports coaches, for instance, did so for a valuable consideration in return. Um, so a woman's been sent to prison. She's only, only going to spend about two weeks over there. And various excuses are made for her that, of course, she would do the best for her offspring who wouldn't. Surely it would be remiss of a, of a mother not to do so. So therefore, one ought to be Ruth and that she's been shown mercy. She's been fined something of the order of $25,000. Um, but that contrasts sharply with a young woman who lied about her residence, who gave her father's address as her residence in order to help her daughter get into a better school. I think it was an elementary school, what we'd call a primary school in the United Kingdom, um, and was sentenced to five years in prison. You heard that correctly. Five years in prison for one lie, no bribes. And that other woman got two weeks in prison. Now, admittedly, the woman who um, lied about her, her, her residence in order to get her child into a better school um, then had it reduced to only a few weeks. Um, it may be relevant that the woman who um, spent um, hundreds of thousands of dollars on bribery uh, to get her daughter into an outstanding university um, is white and got two weeks in prison, whereas a woman who was initially sentenced to five years incarceration is an African-American. Um, now, all right, you might say, well, you're just picking individual cases. There are millions of convictions in the United States every year. Yes, that is true. But this is um, this is indicative of a, of a broader um, pattern. And I'm not going to bamboozle you and just blast you with statistics, but there's, they're just blizzards of numbers could be thrown at you, which would um, show the same general trend, that whites um, tend to uh, be handed much lighter sentences than African-Americans in relation to crimes of a similar nature and of the same level of gravity. So it touches on privilege. What is privilege? I'm sceptical of the notion of white privilege. I don't reject it entirely. It um, is instructive to look into the uh, etymology of things like privilege. So it's derived from the Latin privileges, as in private laws, as though laws are framed for a, a certain section of society and they're allowed to make the laws themselves to suit themselves. But for the generality of the population, the laws are different and they would be dealt with more harshly. Um, so judges, where do they come from, the judiciary? Well, obviously uh, it's open to everybody, but in practice, the, uh, the, the bench in the United States is overwhelmingly white. Now, the population of the US is perhaps 65% white, perhaps 55% white, somewhat depending on one's definition of white. Are Hispanics white or not? Some Hispanics are white, some are not. It's debatable. That's why it's, it's, it's hovering around 60%. And then the various the non-white groups in the United States, African-Americans, Hispanics, certainly many of them, uh, Native Americans, Asian Americans, and um, and whoever else. So um, we all know there's been a great deal of color prejudice in the United States, and obviously as recently as 1967, many states had um, color prejudice by law. Um, but uh, you could abolish those laws. But um, popular color prejudice did, obviously did not disappear overnight. What was ingrained into people for, for centuries didn't vanish in a split second. Um, what else? There's also gender, so the, the bench tend to be male. Male judges, are they more likely to act in a certain way towards men, a certain way towards women? Perhaps. You think the traditional gentleman would want to be merciful to women? Do they tend to hand shorter sentences to women than to men for the same crime? I'm not sure. Perhaps. 
Um, I'm prejudiced towards thinking that they do. But again, I might be mistaken. Appearance, what you wear, how you behave, your your manner, how somebody conducts himself or herself, and uh, tone of voice, things like that, facial expression. First impressions count. They shouldn't do, but they do. And it's astonishing the psychological studies have been done, which shows that pe- people decide so, decide so much within a split second of seeing someone. There's someone I remember, I remember I met uh, very distinctly. I met him, my goodness, 26 years ago this month. And um, I took an instant dislike to him. I just knew I was against him. But I got to know him over five years. And I came to like and like, like him more and more the more I know him. I actually bumped into him just a couple of months ago in the railway station, this banker chap. Um, so first impressions, they can be wrong. They can be right. But obviously much wiser to reserve, reserve judgment. And obviously the same will work on, on, on jurors. Now, judges, well, they should be judicious. They should be people who are selected for their um, sagacity, for obviously for their erudition, all the rest of it. Also for, for their justice, not to be prejudiced this way or that way, without fear, without favour, approaching each case with an open mind. Obviously, in the Anglosphere, they, they, they don't determine guilt, usually. It's the jury, certainly in the United States. There are juries in, in almost all uh, criminal trials, so far as I can tell. But um, judges are still human, and they're subject to prejudice like everybody else. Somebody looks like me, do I identify with this person? If I'm male and he's male, it's against a woman. I'm more and more inclined to take the side of a man against a woman. Perhaps, I would hope not. I would hope I could put all that to one side and not be prejudiced this way or that way. Not be worried of being accused of being prejudiced towards a male and therefore trying to be prejudiced against him in order to combat that uh, accusation. I know that whichever way I turn as a judge, I'll be accused of something. So I shan't let that perturb me. I will do my duty without fear, without favour, irregardless of any brickbats that may be thrown at me. So it must be um, unemotional and thick-skinned. But uh, do the affluent, do they tend to sympathise with the affluent? affluent? I would suspect that they do. One of us, he's like us, okay? They, they've got something in common here. We've got something going here. Don't you find how you seek out like-minded people or people from a similar background? Could be to do with ethnicity, to do with language. Right, language is partly simply a means of communication. It could be to do with culture. It could be to do with age, with ethnicity, with religion, with political affiliation. People go for those with those for people whom they have something in common with, usually. Understandably, unsurprisingly, that's human nature. And doesn't that make you more inclined towards them, to cluster, to be a bit tribal about it? And, and are those in low incomes, do they feel more sympathy for those in low incomes, perhaps? And perhaps some resentment, some hostility towards those uh, who are more affluent and so forth. And it reminds me of what the, the CIA found, that um, in 9-11 they may have missed it because they were too white. They had almost no Muslim Americans. I know uh, skin tone and faith are not the same. However, in the United States, um, Muslim Americans are overwhelmingly of a darker hue than most Americans, than the average white American. So, uh, but anyway, that there were certain nuances and things were said by said by Al Qaeda that the CIA didn't pick up on because they didn't have that uh, cultural context to realize that there's a certain self mimicry. Even the way one person sitting in a room. Another person that comes in tends to do the same. And in linguistics, you'll find this of upshifting and downshifting to meet the other person's accent. Or, for example, the accent of Her Majesty the Queen. Elizabeth II, you can hear some recordings of her very first sound recording she broadcast in about 1942. This cut class accent, it sounds ludicrous now, just, just like autoparodic. This comical version of received pronunciation to a much more demotic accent now. And that accent has just changed over time partly because it's just gone out of fashion. Almost nobody speaks like that. Moreover, she was mingling with courtiers and meeting politicians who spoke with the same diction. But over the decades, the people she's met have come from more middle-class and working-class backgrounds, and so she's downshifted towards them and so forth. Do you perhaps you find your accent changing, even sometimes quite suddenly on the phone, speaking to whoever it is? But um, there have been psychological studies done this on racism, about trust, you know, that um, prisoner's dilemma. You may know this classic experiment of being in a room and if you inform on the other person and you'll be let off, 
If neither of you inform, then you'll both be let off. But if the one informs and the other doesn't, the one who didn't inform was going to go down for a long sentence and blah, blah, blah. And various negotiation exercises. And, and you, you don't meet the person and speak to them over the phone or be shown a photo of them. But if that person is the same colour as you, you're more likely to be trusting. And they're a different colour from you, you're more likely to, to distrust the person and blah, blah, blah. Is that innate? Is that genetic? Perhaps. Is it acculturated? Is it, is it conditioning through things you've heard and seen, people have said to you? You've been taught or you've seen it in fiction, you know, on, on the screen. Maybe. I'm not sure. But racism is, is, is rebarbative. I wish it was completely extirpated from the face of the planet. But it might be natural, which doesn't mean it's good. Absolutely not. There are bad human instincts, instincts we have to fight against. And racial prejudice is one of those, if indeed it is instinctive. Um, manners of dress, the way people dress, if you're a very dress up sort of person that another person who's very stylish might appeal to you a bit like her royal highness Meghan markle and uh, her friend um misha nonu who just got married uh, recently because they're both very dressy people and both absolutely fixated with appearances or someone who's quite disheveled quite indifferent to these things sartorial indifference well that would attract people who are the same or people are somewhere in the middle things like that um so uh, someone's name you might like that or dislike and then there were headmistress who admitted a pupil to a school because she liked the girl's name and so forth or think ooh you're my ethnicity even if it turns out to be wrong like there's lots of black Caribbean people who've got Irish surnames we got something going here even though of course their ancestors were victims of my um, ethnic group so people like to hear the same opinions their own opinions played back to them and it's been proven that stimulates the pleasure senses of the brain dopamine so pretend to um, be in accord with their person's religious and political beliefs so that's how privilege can affect uh, justice the way people from a certain uh, stratum of society tends to be the same one as, as uh, the judiciary are more likely perhaps to be given more lenient sentences or those who are more likely to be jurors or more likely to acquit them and more likely to convict those who they feel from the out group and it might be subconscious there could be subliminal prejudice. If you don't want to be prejudiced, even if you believe you're not prejudiced, you might still be. You should fight against it. It's possible to actually fight too hard and a convicted a person from another, sorry, acquit a person from another ethnic group who is actually guilty just because you're desperate not to be racist. Or indeed to convict someone from your own ethnic group, even though he or she is innocent, just because you're desperate not to be inclined towards that person. So you can try too hard against partiality. It's very hard to get these things out of your mind. So people are flawed. Um, we have opinions, we have prejudices. It touches on this whole Brexit debate and the judiciary, the interface between politics and uh, and law, but perhaps I'll save that for another video. Um, so there we are. These are some of my uh, collected thoughts on Desperate Housewives. That actress, I would have given her a ruinous fine, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but not prison, probably not one day. She's not dangerous, Put it this way, if on a dark night you happen to know she's walking down the street towards you, would you be worried? I wouldn't be worried one whit. Um, so we could just we could just find her, hit her where it hurts, in the wallet. I would say, no, it must be jail, even for a token period, because the privilege must be made to pay. And that other woman, she could be fine. She's a woman who doesn't have many assets, so it seems to me. We don't want to put her out on the street. So... If you don't jail her, then she gets off scot-free, I suppose. You could give her probation, a caution. You could give her lots of hours of community service. But I think jail's not really appropriate. OK, she told a lie. A lot of people tell, you, tell Porky Pies a fib. If she's not penalised, everybody's going to do it. But uh, the very idea that she could be sentenced to five years, even if it's reduced, is beyond absurd, is grossly unjust. It's just a brutal sentence. And I, I tend to believe in being fairly compassionate. Obviously, give people a second chance. Don't give them a, a do give them a two hundred and second chance. We got to have um, we got to have some sort of limits. Anyway, there we are. Goodbye. Please comment. I rely on donations to keep this channel going. If you'd like to see more videos, please donate to me on um, Patreon or PayPal. Even better, PayPal George Callahan seventy nine at gmail dot com. That's all small letters in George Callahan. Let me spell it for you. G E O R G E C A L L A G H A N 79 at gmail.com. 
Um, and thank you so much to those who donated. Some of you have said, please do you wish to be anonymous, so I shan't be saying your names. I do teach, teach people online all the humanity subjects, including French, English as a foreign language. I'm a tour guide in L London, so direct message me if you want more services from me. Thank you. Good night.